In this video, I'm going to share with you the best way to use the Fibonacci sequence when playing roulette. And if you're a skilled roulette player with a keen eye for detail, then this strategy could be an absolute game changer. The most popular video on my channel with almost 1 million views is a video explaining how players were using the Fibonacci roulette system all wrong by betting on the even chance bets. And I pointed out that if you lose more than three spins in a row, when doing this, that you were practically guaranteed to lose money as the sequence would never allow you to recoup your losses. In that video, I suggest betting on either the dozens or columns because they have a two to one payout, which allows you to make a profit when you eventually hit a winning bet whilst following the Fibonacci progression. But now, a year on, after studying roulette strategies, I think there's a better way, and I think you'll agree after watching this video. And you'll definitely agree if you're particularly perspicacious with winning roulette numbers. A quick reminder on what the Fibonacci sequence looks like before I jump into the best way to use it. The sequence is simply made by adding the previous two numbers together and adding it to the end of the sequence. 12 numbers into the Fibonacci sequence would look like this. When transforming this sequence into a betting system at the roulette table, we simply move along the sequence each time we lose and then reset back to the start when we hit a winner. If we are paid two to one on our bets, the winnings will cover our previous losses and some additional profit. And the cherry on the top of the Fibonacci sequence is that we will receive more profit the further down the sequence we go, almost as if we're being rewarded for our bravery. But interestingly, we don't need a payout of two to one for our Fibonacci sequence to be profitable. I'm proposing that we can reduce our profits in exchange for a higher probability of winning. And that would be the most optimal way of playing the Fibonacci sequence on roulette. To show you what I mean, let's convert this two to one payout into a decimal. Sports bettors will be familiar with this concept, but two to one odds can also be written as odds of three X. In other words, the amount you bet multiplied by three is the amount that you will be returned. So if you were to bet $1 on a 3x, you would be returned $3. $1 is your original bet, $2 is your profit, aka 2 to 1 odds. Instead of a 3x return on your money, what about a 2.77x return on your bet? Don't worry, I've not just picked that number out of the sky. I'll explain in a moment how we can get these odds. Veterans at the roulette table might already know the answer to this. So how would a 2.77x return on your money perform when playing the Fibonacci sequence? For example purposes, let's assume we lose 6 bets and win our 7th bet. So we will have lost 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8 and then we win on the 7th progression which is 13. 13 multiplied by our 2.77 return equals 36. Remember, this is a return of 36. So with an original bet of 13, that gives us a profit of 23. If we add up our previous losses, this only totals 20. Therefore, we have won three units over the entire Fibonacci progression. And no matter where you are in the Fibonacci sequence, a return of 2.77x on your bet will complete your Fibonacci sequence, turning it into a profitable one. So now there's two obvious questions. How in the world do we get a 2.77x return on roulette? and wouldn't it be better to have a 3x return as we will win more money? To answer the first question, we simply need to bet on 13 of the 37 numbers, and I suggest we do this by betting on the neighbour bets. A number and its neighbours by 6 means that we are betting on that number and the 6 numbers either side of it on the roulette wheel. So for example 0, the 6 numbers to its left and the 6 numbers to its right, giving us a total of 13 numbers covered. Placing $1 each on these 13 numbers would be a total bet of $13. If any of these 13 numbers land, we will be returned $36. $13 bet with a $36 return is a 2.77 return. So now let's answer the second question. Why don't we just bet on a dozen or a column where the payout is 3x rather than 2.77x? Let's run the numbers. 13 numbers that are winners means that 24 of them are losers. If you're playing on a double zero roulette table, then you have 25 losing numbers, but please don't play double zero roulette. There are single zero tables available no matter where in the world you live. If you would like help finding the best casinos to play roulette at, you can take the quick two minute quiz using the link in the description. Assuming you are playing at a single zero roulette table with 24 losing numbers, 
That means you have a 64.8% probability of losing. Compare this to betting on a dozen, where you have 25 losing numbers, giving you a 67.5% probability of losing. Now that might not sound like a big difference, but when we consider the only way the Fibonacci roulette system loses money is when we either run out of our bankroll or hit the table maximum bets, this seemingly small difference can have a massive impact. Let me show you with an example. I'll assume we are playing at a good roulette table with good table limit ratios of 100 to 1. For example, if the minimum bet is $1 on a straight up number, then the maximum bet is $100. Casinos will have different ratios, and as a generalisation, a table with bigger ratios are better to play on. But let's stick with this 100 to 1 table limit ratio for our example. Going back to our Fibonacci sequence, this means that after we bet 89 on a straight up bet, then we are blocked by the table maximum bet to increase up to the 144 the progression suggests. And being blocked, the system fails and we can't recoup our losses. To get to the point where we lose our $89 bet, we will have had to lose 11 bets in a row. The probability of losing 11 bets in a row whilst betting on 12 of the 37 numbers is 1.3%. That's calculated by multiplying our 67.5% probability of losing each spin to the power of 11. However, if we move to this improved Fibonacci system, betting on 13 numbers and a probability of losing each spin at just 64.8%, our chances of losing 11 bets in a row has now reduced to just 0.84%. In other words, there is a 1 in 77 chance of hitting an adverse sequence and being stopped by the table limit using the original system, and just a 1 in 119 chance of the same situation happening to us by betting on our 13 numbers. Both systems return a profit when we eventually hit a winner and complete the sequence. One of them reduces our probability of losing dramatically. Before I explain how you can use skill to make this improved Fibonacci sequence even better, let's address its negative aspect, and that's the bankroll you might need. As these bets are the amount you are betting on each of the 13 numbers, if you are betting $89 on 13 numbers, that would be a total bet of $1,157, and that's after a total loss of $1,859 from your previous bets. Not many of us have $3,000 to take to the roulette table. But not to worry, there are online casinos that you can bet as little as one cent on the number. So you could scale this Fibonacci strategy down to a bankroll of just $30. If you would like help finding those online casinos, feel free to take the quiz. Now for the skill part. Many experienced players will be familiar with spin bias. This is when roulette dealers spin the ball into a certain section of the wheel more often than not. It can usually be found with completely new dealers trying to spin the ball as fast as they possibly can every time, or really experienced dealers that are unknowingly consistent in their spins. If you can spot a spin bias, then you could use the Fibonacci betting sequence to cover the 13 numbers in the section of the wheel the dealer is likely to hit. Spin bias is rare to find and extremely difficult to spot, but friend of the channel, Mr. Kick Happy, has created a sheet that can help us identify spin bias. Depending on when you're watching this video, you can watch a live example of this sheet in action whilst using this strategy right here. To download this helpful resource completely free, come and join the Discord using the link in the description.